Those are against. The stilling arm. Abstention. What could be the biggest rupture in US-Israel relations to date? As America refused to veto the first ceasefire resolution to pass in the UN Security Council since the war in Gaza began, instead abstaining. The draft resolution has been adopted. A vote the White House insisted was not a shift in policy, a vote Israel described as a clear retreat. Its defence minister releasing this message ahead of a meeting in D.C. with National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan. We have no moral right to stop the war in Gaza until we return all the hostages home. We will operate against Hamas everywhere, including in places where we have not yet been. The non-binding resolution demands an immediate ceasefire over Ramadan and for Hamas to release its hostages. Israel says any ceasefire must be conditional on the release of all of its hostages first. More than 130 are still believed to be held. As Palestinians queued for the aid to break their fast last night in Mawasi, a cloud of black smoke billowed behind them. In Rafah, meanwhile, where more than half of Gaza's population shelters, health officials on the ground said an airstrike had killed seven, including this woman's brother and his family. There is no safe area at all. They told them to move to the south. Here is the south. Where is the safety? Where is the safety? There is no safety. They bombed them while they were sitting there. They hadn't finished their iftar. <laughs> but it's Israel's plans for a ground invasion here in what had been designated a safe zone that they fear the most. Plans President Biden had hoped to divert this week in a meeting with an Israeli delegation. Instead, within minutes of the abstention, and as he had warned, Netanyahu cancelled the visit. And as Israel warns of moving into new territory, its second operation in Al-Shifa hospital in Gaza's north continued into its sixth day. The IDF claiming it had killed 170 militants in or around its compound and to have found these weapons inside. It's civilians in the north who shoulder the brunt of aid shortages. In the north that the threat of starvation lurks most, with the UN warning of imminent famine. Today, Israel confirmed it would stop working with the UN's aid agency there, accusing it of perpetuating the conflict. The decision not to allow UNRWA's convoys to go to northern Gaza where we have a dramatic starvation situation is totally unacceptable. The US, Israel's top military ally, said today only diplomacy could bring about a sustainable ceasefire. But with talks over Rafa stalling and having lost Israel's ear in part, that diplomacy will now be more delicate than ever. Well, let's go to our Washington correspondent, Siobhan Kennedy, who is outside the State Department. Siobhan. Well, this is undoubtedly another big moment in the deterioration of the relationship between Joe Biden here and Prime Minister Netanyahu. Essentially, Israel today threatened America and said, if you don't veto that Security Council resolution, we will not sit round the table with you and talk about your alternative proposals to us invading Rafa. The US didn't listen. It didn't veto that proposal. Uh, it abstained, as we just heard. And so Israel immediately pulled the delegation. The question now is, where does it go from here? Does that relationship continue to go downhill? Where well, the White House is keen to downplay the seriousness of what happened this morning. Uh, the national security spokesman, John Kirby, was speaking to the press moments ago. Let's hear how he had to characterize it. We're, we're, we're kind of perplexed by this. Number one, it's a non-binding resolution. So there's no impact at all on Israel and Israel's ability to continue to go after Hamas. Number two, it does not represent a change at all in our policy. It's very consistent with everything that we've been saying we want to get done here. Well, that's a sentiment that was echoed here at the uh, press briefing I was at in the State Department. A spokesperson said he believed that there would still be lots of opportunity for America to lay out its case to Israel, not least right now at this moment when the Israeli Defense Minister Gallant is due to meet with Secretary Blinken right now in this building in the next couple of 
moments. And that is important for two reasons, because it does, in fact, really uh, show more evidence yet that the America is prepared to meet with Israeli officials and sideline Netanyahu. And it is also important because we know from his own words that Gallant is coming here in his statement that he released yesterday with a focus on, and I quote, preserving our ability to obtain platforms and munitions from the United States. So will America, will Secretary Blinken use this meeting here right now with Mr. Gallant and will uh, 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 the Secretary of Defense uh, Lloyd Austin, who is meeting with Gallant tomorrow, will they use those meetings to condition for the first time the provision of those munitions to Israel in return for Israel reining in its activities and beginning to stop the war in Gaza? Siobhan Kennedy. Now, we did ask to speak to a spokesperson for the Israeli government, but no one was available tonight. I am joined now by Yossi Balin, the former Labour minister in Israel. Thank you for joining us. There are reports tonight that a member of the government, Gideon Saar, has resigned. Um, if this is confirmed, how, how significant is this? Is the government in trouble? Regretfully not. It is not in trouble. I mean, uh, he joined the, the government a few months ago. He did not give it the majority. It has a majority of 64 without him. And it will continue to have uh, this majority. So what do you make of this resolution and Mr Netanyahu's response? I don't understand it. I really don't understand it. I mean, what the, the, the UN is saying is, is obvious, that uh, Hamas should uh, release all the hostages, including uh, apparently uh, babies of uh, one-year-old babies. Uh, and uh, Israel uh, should uh, agree to a humanitarian uh, pause uh, for uh, two weeks until the end uh, of, the, of the holiday. Uh, this is uh, reasonable. There is no reason for any crisis between uh, Israel and the United States, which uh, abstained. Uh, I think that uh, had I been there, I would have supported it. Of, of course, I would like to see uh, some harsh uh, uh, words about uh, the Hamas massacre in, uh, on October the 7th, but this is not a reason uh, for a crisis with the United States. And I, I'm afraid that uh, my prime minister is just uh, uh, in, in a kind of a voyage to a confrontation with the United States, God knows why, after the help that we got from the United States in the last half a year. Well, I mean, what happens if he ignores the Security Council resolution? It is not uh, chapter uh, seven, it is uh, chapter six, uh, as you know. And uh, things, uh, chapter six is actually a kind of a recommendation. Uh, but uh, I mean, there is no reason why he should breach it because if the uh, Hamas is ready uh, to release the hostages, uh, Israel, I presume, will be uh, ready to, uh, put, to uh, have a ceasefire for, for uh, two weeks. I mean, the, the Israeli government's objection is that the release of the hostages is not a precondition. Um, and, and that remains the government's position. If it holds on to that position, does it risk uh, a deteriorating relationship with Washington? I hope not. I hope that uh, there the, 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 the are some uh, uh, smart people in this uh, government uh, who will not uh, allow the deterioration. I mean, the, 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 the fact that... Uh, Netanyahu asked uh, the delegation that he wanted uh, to send to uh, President Biden uh, not uh, to go there is a big mistake. And and really, I mean, I, I, I'm not just saying it. I really don't understand why does he need a crisis with our best friend in the world? I mean, can you explain? I mean, from the outside, you might be forgiven for thinking that the Israeli government is in some crisis because it's got... A disagreement within the cabinet, a disagreement within the war cabinet. Benny Gantz is saying the prime minister is wrong and that he should be going to Washington, let alone stopping officials from going to Washington. The defence minister is in Washington and is showing no sign of coming home. And then on the far right, people like Ben Gavir are accusing the United Nations Secretary General and the Security Council itself, which includes the United States and Britain, of being anti-Semitic. Well, Israel has the, the worst government ever, ever. 
and the shorter its uh, period, its its uh, uh, term in power, the better for all of us. I am afraid that uh, the majority of Netanyahu right now is secured, despite of what you described. Uh, but I hope that you are right, that uh, this government will not uh, go on for long. Uh, it doesn't have the support of the people. In all the public opinion polls, Netanyahu himself and his party are very, very low. If he goes for elections, uh, he will lose. And uh, maybe this is one of the reason, uh, reasons why he, he wants to talk to his own base when he is uh, uh, confronting the American president. Yossi Balin, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you. Well, tonight, Hamas, which is, of course, a prescribed organisation in this country as a terrorist organisation, released a statement saying, we welcome today's call by the UN Security Council for an immediate ceasefire. We emphasise the necessity of reaching a permanent ceasefire and we affirm that this should ensure withdrawal of Israeli forces from Gaza. And also, we are ready to engage immediately in the prisoners' swap process, where prisoners on both sides will go back and join their families. We highly appreciate the efforts of the countries who took this initiative that proved the justice of the Palestinian issue and the intense need to swift ceasefire. Well, a short time ago, I spoke to James Elder, who's a spokesperson for the United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF, and I began by asking him what the situation was with food and shelter where he is in Gaza. Utterly horrendous. I'm literally just back from the very north of the Gaza Strip, Jabalia. Christian, they're going past tens of thousands of people on the street, women, children, adults who are doing that universal symbol of food, please food. Now, the, the, the convoy I was with, we had UNICEF vaccines and nutritional supplies for malnourished children and UNFPA obstetric kits. So on a loudspeaker, we informed them this is medical supplies and the immense grace, five and a half months they've been dealing with, the, we, we went through. But then in Jabalia, you know, you can see the gauntness of, of children. A little girl hold my hand just asked for a single tomato. Um, no, aid, no food aid has gone through for several days. I think UNRWA has been blocked from sending aid to the North, Christian. They send 50% of all food that gets to the North. We must be very clear on this. Israel's responsibility to allow all aid, food aid and every other sort, it's not happening. That's why we have an imminent famine. I mean, Israel keeps saying that it is not stopping goods from crossing the border. The problem is distributing goods within Gaza. Is that true? Let's break this down. Trucks haven't been allowed to go north with food for days. So, so no, truth matters here. And, and the truth is there are hindrances, there are obstructions, there is a desperate lack of aid. UNRWA has been blocked from giving aid to the north. Remembering that the imminent famine in the north, it's man-made. The only good news here is it can, be, it can be fixed. There are two crossings in the north where I was today seeing people desperately pleading for food. They could have had food within 10 minutes. That's how close the crossings are in the north. We are not allowed to use those. That is the reality of what we're dealing with here beyond the fact that aid workers get killed trying to deliver aid, beyond the fact that our warehouses have been bombed, beyond the fact that Palestinians have been killed trying to receive aid. And is there any reaction there yet to the passing of this Security Council resolution? Does it give people any hope? Yeah, I think it will. I mean, literally, I'm back out of a convoy and I heard the news, Christian, but it's staggering how many people in Arabic or English will say ceasefire, ceasefire. I was at uh, Kamal Adwan Hospital last week. That's where children died of malnutrition and mothers in that ward with paper-thin babies would just... I said, what do you need? Ceasefire, ceasefire. People are pleading for a ceasefire. This is, this is Gaza's last hope. So, so, yes, a fully implemented ceasefire, not on paper. I'm sorry, to, I don't want to overstate it, but at three in the morning when you wake and your building is shaking, and I'm in a building, there are people just here in tents shaking from the force of a bombardment nearby. You lie there just feeling like you're lying in a coffin. So a ceasefire and children can go to bed knowing they will wake up alive? Game changer. James Elder, thank you very much.